bet your ass it's good. What's up guys? Lance, Lebec 2 Spice, over here hanging out with Aaron, Lebec 2 Spice. This is You Bet Your Ass It's Good. Tonight we're going to do etouffee. Oh yeah. We're going to show them the way I like to cook etouffee, and that's that. Etouffee is maybe my favorite uh, Cajun uh, dish or preparation, so I love it. It's up there. I love it's it. up there for me. It's one of my, it's one of my top. Crawfish etouffee. Yeah. It's also one that I don't get to cook that often. I don't know why. I cook it that often. Good. But I love it. All right, we're gonna get this thing started. What do we got here, Le Creuset? So right now I got Le Creuset. I love unfinished cast iron. Frankly, okay. it's one of my favorite. This is a you know enameled cast iron. It's gonna be amazing. You get you get deeper fondue with this. It's like you get more sticking with the enamel. Okay. If you have a good oiled, seasoned, strict like just straight cast iron, it's easier to unstick it. Okay. That's just, you want it to just stick. one of those nuanced things. You want it to stick. You want it to stick and you want to deglaze it, stick and deglaze it, and stick and deglaze it. Cool. All right, so we have some butter in here right now. We'll put a little more butter, a little more carrot gold. While that heat's coming up, we will rock and roll it. So, etouffee to smother is what etouffee is. Not a little more. Yeah, that's a perfect amount. That's a little more. That's a little more. A nice knob of butter. Um, etouffee is just to smother. So then you can make a shrimp etouffee, crawfish etouffee. I've heard of two of them. Okay. I think it's best to just relax when you're cooking this shit. And not worry about the... My favorite thing is people, well, I mean, is it really an etouffee if you're putting this? Man, we're just going to put it in like Okay. So I'm going to do... We have butter. I'm going to cut these. This is just some bacon. Some good smoked bacon. I'm gonna cut it into some really quick little lardons. Also known as little chunks of, chunks of bacon, right? A lardon is a French term for just chunks of bacon, basically. That's it. Right? Yeah, and like. And You'll probably, hear chefs saying it sounds all fancy, but. It's just little chunks of bacon. Yeah. While that's coming up, I'm gonna add just a little bit of bacon to the pot. A little bit of bacon, a little bit of butter. While that's coming up, we'll cut, start cutting some other stuff. The meat? Cut some meat. Let's see what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab a couple of. It doesn't matter what order we're doing it. I'm gonna grab a couple of each. And I'm, just, I'm just gonna. There's no right way to do this stuff. Okay. There's a better way to do things and a silly way to do things. But when it comes down to all this, I don't have to show you the way I like to cut my little. So, mushrooms. We're putting mushrooms in a crawfish shape too quick. Yeah. So, you know, if that triggers anyone, I'm sorry. Yeah, but what, what it, I mean, a lot of people put cream of mushroom soup in it. So. Which is an abominable. Yeah. But, so I'm gonna do some mushrooms. I like mushrooms in it. But I, the thing is, I might like cream of mushroom in well, it's just salty. That's probably everywhere I've had it. Is that's how they make it. So I'm going to cut them in half. Okay. And then I literally just kind of turn it on its side. And it's like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. Stems on? Yeah. It stems on the I usually look at them, make sure none of them are, uh, you know what, these are kind of woody. Yeah, I feel like. Um, we're not going to throw them in yet. We're going to gather all these shrooms. Okay. And how, how many shrooms do you want? Let's do, so here's, what, here's one of the things I'm going to do. So here's my pot, and I'm not going to fill this pot to the brim with a etouffee, right? Yeah. Let's say that I'm going to have my etouffee come up to, let's call it that three-quarter line. Okay. Right? I kind of want to visualize my starting veg to go more than halfway up okay. when it's starting out, yeah. right? And mushroom is sort of a, a minor part of the aromatics, not a major okay. component. So what we just did there... Oh, what did you do? I three? did four. You did four and I did two. Okay, so that's, you're good. that's probably perfect. Okay. So now we're going to do bell peppers real quick. Bell peppers, like the slowest of the trinity to cut up. It's yeah. Kind of silly, but no, it is. Yeah. So what what, what we're going to do here, mind blowing with some people. Okay. I'm worried you hate the way I cut bell peppers, and I'm going to find out right now. I'm just going to show you. Okay. It's comical. So there's seeds in here. Yeah. They're a pain in the ass if they get cut loose. Yeah. Like no shit. So I don't want to fuck with those seeds. And, and I don't need to do this fancy rolling of the bell pepper. Uh -huh. And I don't want to cut it in half. Let me just tell you, I was, my, my dad's a ridiculously amazing cook. My grandmother was a ridiculously amazing cook. It, most people's grandmothers can cook good food, but they never worked in a kitchen where 
time matters. Yeah. Right? And like these are moving around. Yeah. So I don't want to cut down through the thing. I don't want to disturb the seed. So I'm literally just going to cut. That's how I do it. Boom. That's how I do it. And what's funny to me is how many people, and then the other thing too is, so now I have this perfect little bell pepper, if you notice, all that's left is junk that we don't want. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and so, we're, so what are we gonna do? Julianne, yeah, Julianne first, so cut it in the sticks. Again, a fancy word. Julianne, also known as some sticks. And if I open the textbook, it would say, Julianne, this dimension by this dimension. Yeah. That's all just irrelevant information at this point. It's funny you bring it up. Uh, grandma's in the kitchen not having to worry about how much time they're taking or whatever. And working in kitchens, like being stressed out that you're taking too long to chop garlic or, or chop onions or something like that. Yeah. You know, or, or you need to hurry. And you know what's funny is the fact that grandma did not worry about the time in the kitchen, that's bullshit. Because they're dealing with like grandkids or kids or whatever. But when you get in the restaurant environment, man, it's like a. Pressure cooker. What quarter of the guys are having? Here's a kitchen trick, right? Yeah. Pick up the cutting board and take it with you. Boom. All right, there's our bells. This, this is looking good. It's smelling good. It's smelling good. I wish we had that. Uh, Prime bacon and butter. You know, it's not something I do. You don't really think to do it. You, you would think. That seems a little overboard, but it is overboard. That's the idea. So in a mirepoix mix, half of your mirepoix ends up being onion. The other half is split evenly between celery and bell pepper. That's the way traditionally it's supposed to be done, right? Yep. So my onions, I'm gonna do these onions. I'm just gonna show you real fast the way I'm my favorite one. I cut both my ends off, come soft. Then I cut it down like this. Yep. Right? Yeah. That's exactly how you're doing it. Yeah. I've seen uh, one of my favorite things that I watch people do, the silliest is when I see people teaching people to do this, like it's the only way to do it. I'll show you what I mean. This but this onion is already it's pre-strained. It's precise for you. Yeah. So you don't like to You don't have to do the cross cut. You don't like the cross cut? It's a, well it's unnecessary. Yeah. So I mean it, look, you're not committing any sort of this is Actus, you know, so Sussex. So you're going to go straight now. I'm just going to go, no, I'm going to come like this. The cross cut I'm talking about, I'll show you. Ah, okay. So one of the things I'm doing right now, can't see it over there, is right here. Yeah. That's intact. Yeah. Okay. Because right? I always come at it this way. Right. Well, so, I, would, I would go here and then I would go there. Like people will go cut it this way and then cut it this yeah. way. I'm, I've just made this cut. Yeah. The bell pepper's already cut this way. The onion. Yeah, the onion, sorry, the bell pepper's here. The onion's already done that, so then, then this is the other trick too. Is to follow the curve of the onion. Tell me more. Right here it is, like this. Ah, you know, I remember seeing you do this back in the day. Yeah, now we have, and you can look at it, it's a perfectly even, really pretty little dice. That's nice. I mean, it, and you know who told me, who showed me that the first time was, was my first chef over there, uh, Jason, who actually is the exec over at the son of this now. So doing this little trick, you can run through a lot of onions fast. My dad talks about this bacon, when you got it to the right spot, it smells different. Yeah. It smells like fried bacon. Yeah. That's how you know you're there, because it starts to smell different. Celery, I don't know if there's any real tricks. I run, I'm gonna run through this dude long ways. Yeah, I go through the middle. Usually like once or twice, depending on how fat it is. And then when you get towards the end where it's fatter, I'll run through it a couple times. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I'll even cut it lengthwise in half so that while I'm going through it, I'm going through all the way at once. It won't take me as long to run through it. Celery, one of the things that we're thinking about, we were talking about like not caring that much about the perfect sort of size of our dice. One thing you do want is you don't want anything too different from yeah. your celery. You want it about the same as the onion, which is about the same as the butter. 
Mainly because while you're sauteing all that down, you want it to all so soak together. together at yeah. the same time. Yeah, you don't want it to be too freaking crazy. Celery. Let my celery, Chef. Yeah. We're gonna bring some garlic over. Also, all right. also known as garlic. <laughs> some garlic. We know who that we know who says that. Uh we're gonna slice some garlic, but this pot is looking like she's like just really ready. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And now look, here's one of the things I'm gonna do. I'm gonna mix this little mix up. Because one of the things I'm about to do is sort of one of my little, you know, when you were cook when we were cooking in in the restaurant, if I'm cooking two or three or four pots of this, or if I've got, let's say I'm cooking a jumbo and a, and a, a, gu, a jumbo, a gumbo and a jambalaya all jumbo, coming to the same, gumbo. they're all gonna kind of use the same aromatic mix. So right now I just mix this all together. Mm -hmm. So now I can add this as much as I need, sort of depending on where it ends up looking like in the pot. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. You might not even use it all. Might not use it all. But I didn't want to just take off the top because it wasn't, wouldn't have been equal parts of everything. So I'll turn the heat back up so we can start coming up. And now I'm looking at this going, yeah, we can probably use all that. One of the things that, as we start making more of these videos, people are gonna start seeing, is there's a lot of, there's a lot of aromatics in this. Yeah. Like almost every way I make everything. Like gum, from, from gumbo to jambalaya, they all just have a lot of aromatics. That's where all the deliciousness comes from, man. Now, at this point, while we have this happening, what needs to be added right now is a whole bunch of spots. Mm. So that's why we're all here, baby. <laughs> one of my so when I was sort of coming up in the cooking business and teaching myself slash learning how to cook shit from my dad slash whatever, he'd have literally no shit, you know, ten bottles of shit sitting there. Yeah. I'd have to empty the spice cabinet. Yeah. So you got salt and black pepper and garlic and like some, some dry thyme and just tons of stuff. Yeah. Which incidental let's grab the lean right here. So we might as well talk about that over here. So we would basically it takes ten you know, it's tons of shit. Yeah. It's a lot of different little things. And then you also don't want to wait till the end. That's a huge mistake. She's in as we go. She's in as we go. So in here, this I think if there was any sort of inspiration for it, it was that I wanted to be able to add just this to these kind of Cajun classics yeah. and have it literally be all the other. Okay. So when we were, when I was, you know, so you've got, and you can see it, you've got chive, you've got green onion. Yeah, dry, dry thyme. And so your goal here, you're not going to add any other salt at all? No, like towards, when I get, here's the thing, so original blend is not super spicy right but it's got a half amount of black pepper and help and a little bit of cayenne you switch to spicy it's going to be mostly cayenne yeah. so, you know, same amount of black pepper but more cayenne but when i'm using the original i can get some heat yeah i'll get some heat but it'll be a nice round it'll be spicy, like red pepper and black pepper yeah um so if i do sometimes i get towards the end and i'm tasting it i'll go salt if I feel like the heat's okay. where it needs if to you, be. Yeah, if you just want to bring a little yeah. more flavor out. If I feel like the heat's where it needs to be, I won't add any more of it. Okay. Let me see garlic. Let me add garlic. All right. This is garlic. You can get what the sound about. All right. A lot of garlic. 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 Take it up. You like so to take off the edge or what do you do? Yeah, we're going to take the little, little, little funky spots off. Um. So by, by like the, the chef's code, I'm supposed to tell you, according to the uh, Reverend uh, Anthony Bourdain, yeah. that if you don't peel your own fresh garlic, yeah. you don't belong in the kitchen. Yeah. I'm going to be completely honest. I buy peeled garlic. I, I mostly do too. I have three kids, man. Uh, and well, I, don't, I, I don't have an army of French cooks. I, I also buy fresh garlic. Yeah. But it's like you just said, man, I want the right amount of garlic in this. Yeah. And I don't want to take off. Yeah. So anyway, we can go through this and do the old fun. Like this. I'll tell you one of my favorites. Timing. So Alright, now the next test is do you have an accordion? A little bit of fun. <laughs> A 
a little bit of accordion. Look, an accordion, guys, whatever you leave a little bit of the shit attached to the bottom. Yeah, you gotta go all the way through. This, that's it. This is also, just like y'all said, this knife is not that sharp. No, it needs to be touched up. So, I'm gonna show you another way that I like doing this shit. Watch this. You're just gonna cut this into just some chunks now? Yeah. Right? And then. No, I just kind of scrape it. I'm just gonna literally smush it. And I'll kind of get it smushed. It, you can literally turn it into a paste. A paste. Yeah, like a mortar. Yeah. Yeah. So the best part about this, look at it. It, it, it smells good too. And you can put, I see like a lot of chefs, especially TV chefs, they like to do the trick where they put a little salt on the garlic while they're smushing it. Yeah. You don't, you don't have to do that. So there you go. Stir that shit up. And now, here's the other thing. As that shit's sweating down, right now, you add a little more spice to it. So we just add garlic. It's like every time I add a little something, I'll add a little touch. Heard that. The dogs want to taste. That's what that always is. That shit smells all right. I love when you hit the garlic in there. Oh, yeah. Shit starts smelling good. Yeah, we're about to start the rice in just a minute. What we're going to do is get this to the point where, actually, we got a few more snacks. We're going to take all that out in a minute once we like the way it looks. So okay. It's sexy. Then we're going to get a little bit more butter in there. Okay. I mean, I hate to do it. We're going to put a little more butter in there. I don't believe in low fat, guys, just so you know. Because I think low fat is a scam perpetrated by the American people. And yeah, who cares? It takes exactly. So we're going to do, anyway, we're going to get this out of here. We're going to put the butter in. And then we're gonna fry some tomato paste. Ooh, okay, talk to me about that. So I don't eat so you, flour. You're, you're you're off flour. I can't eat. You're not. You're, you're a recovered. It screws me up. Flour addict. And I think that we've over romanticized and depended too greatly on a yeah. root. This is a hot take. I know. This I love is a hot it. take. I'm just keeping it real. I also think we've over romanticized that shitty pumpkin. But I'm not gonna get into that either. <laughs> I like it. It's just so. I like it's it. It's so cardboard. Awesome. Eat some sourdough. It's awesome. But you understand what I'm saying. I know it's me, but I love it. Don't eat any fried seafood and then stuff it in bread. I'll tell you that. It's an angry commentator. <laughs> 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 All right. I'm a, look, I don't even need to be doing this, but I'm kind of funny about using my time wisely. I'll open up some tomato paste. Tomato paste. And I don't know. One. Let's go. Let's just help him too. We're going to be here. We're going to be cooking a whole bunch of stuff anyway. So we might, we might end up using two more time. All right. So usually Etouffee would have, yeah, have a roux, like I'm a blonde, saying, actually, blonde roux. Not a entirely dark. true. When I do, like when I was still doing regular roux stuff, I like a really good light brown butter roux. Uh-huh. When, typically when you're doing a dark, dark roux, like a really dark gumbo roux, I would, um, I would have that be... I would have that be um, dark, and I'll use oil. Because you're going to yeah. higher heat with it. Yeah, I, I do oil in my dark. Yeah. Dark. See, one of the things, you've got a lot of moisture in here, right? So you're not, this is not even, we're, we're almost, but we're not even browning yet, really. Yeah, but it's looking good. We're just starting to get there. Yeah, y'all can kind of see that right there. Now it's a bunch of steam coming up, but it, it's just so beautiful. I wish you were here. I wish you were here to smell it, too. One of the things, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, when we pull the crawfish out, we're adding crawfish to this thing. Crawfish, Chinese crawfish, mm -hmm. you clean and drain the fat. Okay. Louisiana crawfish, you squeeze that bag out all day. like a toothpaste. Okay. Like you want all that stuff. Yeah. It's it's delicious and sweet. The other one, if I'm if I'm if I'm having to use some crawfish tails, I need to. I got to rinse. We're going to have a spot in just a second where we put some stock. Uh, after we've done our paste, and we'll have a resting spot where we'll just put the lid on this and let it just simmer before we add the crawfish. Let everything get to know. And then while, while that's getting the marry and, and sort of falling in love, we'll, we'll cook the rice. All right, and then we'll know we're ready to. Yeah. Then we'll know we're ready to cook the rice. And then while the rice is cooking, we're going to add the crawfish. I don't want those crawfish in here for more than about 10, 20, 10 15 right. minutes. It's already cooked. Start eating. They're cooked. Yeah. If you leave crawfish in for too long, they start getting funky color, yeah. the texture's not the same. It's not as bad as shrimp. Yeah. Shrimp, you stick shrimp in, a, in, in your 
when you pop too early and you, you just get a little erased. This is almost ready. Have you ever had a chef? Have you ever worked in a kitchen where the chef threw your plate of food away and didn't like it? Um, I, I can't remember specifically, but I'm, I'm sure it's happened. I mean, I, I remember, I won't say which chef, but we I would, have that to would definitely, names. definitely mean you have both witnessed the chef go absolutely fucking ape shit on us. Oh, yeah. Like the whole kitchen. Like throwing shit on the table and slamming his hands down. And uh, just, and it was like from zero to 60. It was like he was talking, like this can't happen. This is unacceptable. And then just, bam, just slamming his hands on the, the, uh, the pass. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're just all like, fuck. Oh. They like flexing those ego muscles. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't even remember what we fucked up. I don't think it was anything I fucked up. Who did he put a value on the plate? Well, uh, he, I don't know. He probably got in trouble with the owner for something. Oh, yeah. And then, I don't know. So this thing, it, it's funny to me, this thing just keeps changing. Like, look at the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, the, the color of it. We're doing an etouffee. We're not doing a gumbo. Right? Yeah. We're not doing a jumbo I don't need, to me, I don't need it to ask insanely dark. Really? Yeah. yeah. I, I want it, what we're going to accentuate here is like the natural, like really the color of the, the yummy crawfish. All right, so we're kind of matching. Orange and red. Trying, and yeah. It's kind of silly, but I don't know that's what I think about shit. And so VEC 2 has quite a bit of smoked paprika. Okay. I hate paprika. But you like smoked paprika. I like smoked paprika. Right. I like sweet paprika. The regular paprika, paprika, I don't know why people, paprika? paprika? I don't know why people put regular paprika in their shit. No pat for you. In fact, I've heard people say, I just put the paprika in there for color. Yeah, I hear that. Why? People say, why not put some shit in there for flavor? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and cut some, let's do some of those. And then, so, yeah, I don't do a whole ton. Maybe not some white. You do a little bit of white. Like, take three of those, kind of like all the way down to the stalk. Okay. Put them in. But most of that, you know, just cut the hairs off. Most of that we'll save for like, when it's kind of done, we'll put it in our bowls. And I'll do the same thing with a little bit of my flat roof porcelain. Um, I don't know if there's any tricks for I remember, uh, onions, right? well, for scallions, uh, I had a chef show me, he wrapped them up in a paper towel. Yeah. Because you wanted the to hold fucking. Tight. tight and tiny. The little skinny scallop. So yeah. wrap them up in a paper towel, like really a wet paper towel, yeah. and you cut them like that. And you can, and it, it helps you hold them, I guess, right? right? I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm not bad at, I mean, you can see. Yeah, I don't think that, I think, I don't know. Look, one, one of the things just to watch, and I know you know this, but I'm just saying this, is this is one of, one of those cases where you can get those little accordions. Absolutely. I can't tell you how many. Especially once you get off the, the white, yeah. the white part. So uh, I've got some flat leaf parsley, and what I'm doing with it in my hand is sort of balling it up. Okay. Um, and if you had, like, let's say you had a nice big leaf, like basil, like some, some basil. If you had some basil, you get those nice big leaves, you yeah. roll them up, you know, you cut a chiffon out. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm doing with this. Oh, I thought you were saying put basil on this. So God, no. Early. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that's like a Sesame Street bit. One of these things doesn't belong. Yeah. Uh, we worked for a chef to put basil in his uh, HFA lamps about. He, he who shall not be named. We're not going to get into it. Uh, you have, you have uh, what, basil, oregano. Those things don't belong in cake. And to me, they don't belong in this shit. And because taste and smell are hands down your sort of most memory triggering senses, right? Yeah. So if I have something, I have, if I have some, yep. so we'll put a little bit of green onion and then a little bit of some flat leaf parsley. And so what I like about this is that you're getting some more aromatics in without yep. getting them to the brown stage. Right. It's like kind of fresh. Definitely is a big difference. So this is about to be taken off the fire. Right. So now move some of that stuff and don't scrape. Okay. Like just kind of move some of it when you see it in the camera. So now yep. you see that? We're getting that yumminess. So look, if I, right now it's not so stuck that I can't just get it loose with my with my spoon. Yeah. But you want that? You want that to? You want to keep letting that happen? Yeah. Crazy. Over Let and happen. over again. Crazy. You want to build that little foundation of fawn, the fawn foundation. But yeah, so you've got that fresh, fresh, bright sort of brightness from those fresh greens. 
and you don't want everything all the way brown. Now, now look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be the first one to tell you, you, you don't have to do some of these little funny, where I'm taking everything out right now. Yeah. Like some people want to be like real simple, one pot, one, you know, one sort of go, and not complicated. I don't like to complicate things either. While saying that, I will say that I do like to take this out to have room in my pot. Yeah. To do what I'm about to do with my, uh, my paste. And it's not every day you cook it for your friends. Yeah, take, take, your, take your time, do it right. And they too fake. Look, man, crawfish are not, uh, crawfish cost a little more than, um, you know, pork one. Yeah, what do you think? We got about $60 of crawfish going in this thing? Yeah, right around there. That was quite a bit of veg we reduced down to that, to that right? Yeah. So we started out with what, about half a pot full of veg? Yeah. Ended up with kind of less than a quarter. Pot, all right, we're gonna get the heat back on. I hate to do it. We're gonna put more butter in the pot. Hate to do it. Hate to do it. How dare you. How dare I put more butter. So we're gonna let the, the butter start to brown. It's just gonna accentuate our, our browning. So we opened both those pastes. Now that I'm kind of looking at where we are with this, yep. and where we are here, I think one can might be all we need. Okay. So one of the things here, we're not making a Creole. If I was making like a crawfish or a shrimp Creole or something, I would want to. I would want to kind of highlight the tomato flavors. Okay. Right. And so that's important to understand. This isn't going to make it taste like tomatoes. Not really. It's, yeah. And it's not going to look like tomatoes either because yeah. there's no tomatoes in here. There's yeah. No, no, um, diced tomatoes or crushed tomatoes or any of that. And you look, it's like I said earlier, you just relax. You want to add some rotel to it, add some rotel. You want to add some crushed yeah. tomatoes, add some crushed tomatoes. It's kind of whatever you like. This is just sort of what we like to do. So I'm going to get my heat up. Here's another thing, another trick in here. To keep this loose enough so that we can keep, you know, add a little more butter. Yeah. Just put, yeah, put a little knob of butter in there. And what we're about to do, we're gonna race the clock. We'll turn it down a little bit, so I don't have to race the clock too bad. So, seafood, traditionally people are like, no, oh, you need to put white wine in there. Put your seafood, All right? Yeah. Look, what are we trying to develop right here? Like a really good, deep, dark, red yumminess, right? Ooh, getting dark. Yeah. So, one of our little tricks we're about to do, we're gonna put some red wine in here to glaze. Okay. And we're not going to get carried away, right, and have a whole ton of it in there. Because it doesn't take but a little splash each time to kind of help with glaze it. We're going to have to taste this, too. So I'm going to put a little, like, literally just a splash. Just enough for you to scrape the bottom. And if it's not enough, which it looks like it's perfect. Now, the trick to this, I'm going to turn the heat back up. I'm going to be honest. This is one of those things where once you get good at it, it doesn't take quite as long. But while we're here videoing this and trying to make sure everybody knows what we're doing, it might take us a little while. But we want to do it right. Yeah. So now what's going to happen is the liquid's going to evaporate back out, right? And you're going to get it more. And then we're going to let it stick some more and get darker brown. Each time it goes darker and darker. Why don't we just do a giveaway? All right. What's the giveaway? So in my in my office, I have it's called six or eight, maybe ten bottles of wine. You can't hear me wine club. Okay. This is one of them. Can't have this one. Yeah. This is a Vino Noble. It's a really good wine. I'm gonna tell you right now, the wines the dude picks are badass. Okay. They were all good. I have some whites and I have some reds. I actually have a guy with rosé. We're gonna do a, a, a giveaway. We'll put it in the comments. All okay. right. Right. We're gonna decide on the terms. Decide we've got to do the enter. Okay. We do a giveaway. We're gonna give away. Why don't we just have them do? We do a giveaway a bottle of wine. Yeah. And you just tell us what you want, red or white. Okay. And so we're going to give away how many bottles? One? No. We're going to give away, I don't know, we're going to give away four. Four um, bottles of wine to one person or to no. four different people? Three or four different people. And what if also we gave them one million dollars as well? Let's give them Do you think we get some views on our video? I think so. Let's do All right, it. wine giveaway. You heard it from Lance. He's giving away some motherfucking wine. Give away some wine. Why not? I don't know why. You, to me, you're crazy. You're out of your mind. This, that, this is crazy. We have to taste this shit. Holy shit. Be good. Well, this is good to give it away for free. <laughs> and it's not quite there yet, right? You can go a little bit further. That's great. We'll see what happens. 
see how that comes out, but it does not look like tomato paste anymore. No. And it's going to look even less like it. Look, look less like it. What are you doing for wine? Cheers or some other word? Bon apple. Bon giorno. That's what that is. Arrivederci. Wait, what's the French word? Let the good time to roll. Laissez le bon temps rouler. Say it again for me. Laissez le bon temps rouler. Lezzy le bon ton roulé. Lezzy le bon ton. Lezzy le bon ton roulé. This shit's burning. This is not seafood style. Okay, let's talk about it. I know you're going to ask. Yeah, so... We're not making our own seafood stock. Okay, cause, and we could do that by doing shrimp shells. Or... Shrimp shells. Hey man, you got crawfish boiled, like to keep your shells? Yeah. Like you can make you, a stock you out make, of that. You make a crawfish bisque, you make a stock out of whatever. Yeah, but we don't have that. We're not doing that. And your your kind of point is just because you don't have that, doesn't have to stop you from making some good crawfish tasty thing. Yeah. Now you'd be happy if you had it. Yeah, you'd shrimp be, stock. That'd be great. It'd be awesome. But you don't I want have even it. a mixed seafood stock, whatever you have. So you Brand don't. We don't have it. You don't have it. So we're going to use this. Some chicken. This happens to be bone broth, chicken bone broth. It's phenomenal. Yeah. A lot of good collagen in it. It's nice and thick. Okay. It's going to be awesome. What uh, I've heard, um, uh, you know, Michael Rollman, the food writer. Yep. One of my favorite food writers. Yep. He uh, he has this feeling about, and I use box stock all the time. He says he'd rather use water than box stock. How do you feel about that? I think that's insane. Now, I think it sounds I think, a little elitist, although well, I love Michael Rollman. I, and also, though, I. I'll defend him a little bit. I think maybe at the time when he was writing that and talking about that, there wasn't, we didn't have great access. That has a lot to do with it. This, things have gotten a lot better with box stock. And I'm going to be honest, the quality, look at that paste. The quality, so this is right, like super ready. It's looking ridiculous. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go in here with this first. Turn it around. This oh yeah. Right? Smells good? Yeah. All right, then we're gonna turn the heat down so I don't burn anything. All right, we're, we're done browning. Done browning. Browning is over, we made it, guys. We made it through the browning. <laughs> now we have that paste. Getting to know that, that, that aromatics that we had smothered down. If you look at this, the color of this is just uh -huh. a little bit orgasmic. <laughs> it's food porn. It yeah. really is. Can I right. do this, sir? I just want to feel it. Get in there and love on it. Look at that. So, that's wonderful. Now we're going to go in. Now notice I'm not going in with my crawfish yet. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think you really have to. Some people, you can put your crawfish in and kind of love them up in there and then put your stock in. Okay. I kind of want my salt, my crawfish to use, um, use Poppy's term in Seinfeld. I want them to be so succulent, <laughs> so succulent. But I want them to be like plump and juicy. I, want them to, I don't want them to be kind of like been in there too long. Okay. And also, an etouffee as a smother is not a soup. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so, like, it's like gravy-ish. Yeah. Kind of right. You're not supposed to have that much more gravy than you have crawfish. Oh. For example. Okay. Okay. I got you. Now look, if you're saving money, you got most of the gravy sauce stock and you get a little less crawfish. Well, I'll be honest you with do. you. I thought today when you were like, all right, grab four pounds of that crawfish. I was like, that feels like a lot of crawfish. It is a lot of crawfish. You're really... You could probably do this with two. Okay. And hell, the other thing that you're going to notice, we might get to two and go, that might know. be we enough. We probably just add four. We might add four. Yeah, we should just add all four. <laughs> so look, notice, start, get all that lovey, kind of get it all good. I want you to notice once that tomato paste starts joining forces with all the other stuff. We're not gonna add that yet, but once this starts getting, you see the texture yeah, we got. Yeah, yeah. Like, once you kind of see where that's going, I'm gonna bring that up to a little bit of a simmer. Okay. You're gonna know that we can add some stock probably. Uh -huh. But I don't wanna know, I don't wanna add any until I like like my texture. Okay. Until I go, ah, oh, yeah, it's a little too thick. Right. You know what I'm saying? That looks good. Yeah. And now, we can probably add a little bit of it like too. All right. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to trick, of course I've seen the chef do this crap, but the first person I saw do this was my dad. It was pop, Cajun bake, as I call it, or salt bake, it was yeah. Cajun bake. I'm going to put a little whoop in here, a little, just a little whoop, and then we're going to taste it. Okay. So one of the things we start doing is, 
It tastes awful. We don't don't wait till the end to taste it. Till the very end, because this will then the damn ship sailed. Yeah, yeah. And then it's hard to catch it up. Damn ship sailed. So here you get in there. Now, notice I put it in that bowl. I put it in that bowl because that cools it off tremendously. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. Hard to taste right out of the box. It's possible to burn your face. Now, oh, great. We're at a point where we did, all we did was season the veg, remember? Yeah, I can handle more. So we're gonna put more of this. Rest. So, but I'll tell you what's funny is we're not that far off. Yeah. We're not like, oh God, get the salt, get the bucket of salt. Yeah. So I'm gonna cover the top. And it's not spicy yet. No, it's not spicy yet. Anybody can eat it. But when you use an original, it's gonna take a lot of it to eat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it's gonna take, you'd have to really screw up and put a lot of it. What's funny is you, with a crumb, with a crumb, it makes you fade. The, the cooking is all done to me most, all, most of the, well before the crawfish. Goes in. Once right. the crawfish go in, you kind of want it to be ready, and you might hit it with a little salt, salt, hit it with a little spice for the, you know, for the crawfish. Another thing you can do is I've seen people do is we'll go take your crawfish, put them in a bowl, season them, yeah, and then dump them in there. So I'll give you my opinion. I think the heat is there. I might just go salt. I think it needs more salt. Though. Yeah. That's the perfect example. Because I want more heat maybe on my plate with some hot sauce or something but like that. Some people might not want. Exactly. So here's what we're gonna do. Bring this baby over. You want some sea salt? A little pink, pink Himalayan right. salt. Which is exactly, it was sea salt. So we're gonna turn this down to a, a little low simmer, put a lid on it. I don't want it to reduce anymore. In fact, I might add a little stock, but it's fine like it okay. sits. We'll make rice real quick. All right. Talk to me about rice. So rice, hands down, my favorite rice, the only rice I cook is jasmine. Okay. That's, why is that? Because it has flavor. All right. What, why not basmati? I don't mind basmati. Okay. It's less aromatic, I find, than jasmine. Really? Okay. I think jasmine's a little more aromatic. Also, basmati has different length, yeah. different textures, longer yeah. grain, which is different. Yeah. I just like, I also like the kind of, I can cook this so it's a little, got a little, little toothiness to it. Okay. You know? Yeah. And it, got, it has a nice little kind of sticky texture. Yeah, we're gonna do two cups of rice for right now. There you go. All right, we're gonna put the crawfish in. All right. So, these are, it's funny to me that you gotta say, these are certified for these animals. Certified. Legit. Certified. Which sounds silly, but it makes a huge difference. All of that. All that fat, you want all that stuff in there. You don't want to, Clean your crawfish tails, you don't want to do any of that stuff. Pour all that goodness in there. Yeah. Let's be honest, you could probably stop right here. So we're gonna go with a little more of this, then we hit it with more, hit it with more back too. Alright. It's because you got a lot of other stuff in there. I hit the hit the bottom. And let me tell you what else. If you wanted to, instead of adding more of that, which is what I do, let me steal me sleep right here. See the steam come out of here? Yep. You know what time that is. Right, time to have my rice. Nice. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put that rice in there. Stir it up. I'm gonna turn it down to a low simmer. I'm gonna say, Hey Siri, set a 15 minute timer. At 15 minutes, we look at it, we turn it off and let it sit on the box. How's that look? Okay. I'll show you what we're about to do. Good. Let me sneak in here. So, in here, as I'm sure you can imagine, I have more of that. So I've got three here. What did I say earlier? Shouldn't be adding things just for color. Uh -huh. I'm about to add it for color. But I'm also adding smoke. Because this shit is good. Smoke and like smokiness, which is why I love bacon with uh -huh. my uh, seafood. Smoke and seafood just are like super buds. Yeah, throw that butter in. One of the things that, that I, yeah, what, Jesus Christ, every freaking chef you ever worked with was like, they need to butter that out. 
any good Louisiana cook or chef knows, you gotta butter that out. And what, when, look, one of the things about buttering it out, as they say, or mount it with butter, is you don't want to mount it with butter on a, on a boil. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing, because that, right. then it just separates and it's nasty. Yeah. You want to mount it with butter when you're kind of done cooking it, the heat's sort of coming down, which our heat is sort of settling in. Yeah. We got the cold, you know, the room temp crawfish. Um, and now we're just adding butter. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. All right, let's taste it, see where the salt is. My prediction is it needs some salt, because of all those crawdads. I'm gonna do more of this and add more salt. All right. Actually, I might just do this. On the finish, the little finish. So I'm gonna talk about the, the salting and the and the salivation response. You ever read any of um, Grant Atchis? Grant Atchis, his little, his little principle. Yeah. You? And I say that because he had insane cancer. Yeah. Lung and throat right. cancer. Right. So for a long time, couldn't taste at all. But one of the one of the to me, when it's perfectly salted, your mouth waters. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. And and I think anybody, if you start paying attention, to that you'll notice it. But if you've never heard it, you kind of don't think to look for that. But that's a, that's a ridiculous process that you think. That's incredible. And look, some people get into, let's add a little more paprika, make it more red, you know, da 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 Unnecessary. 